Welcome back YouTube. My name is Dennis Panuta for tutorials.eu. In this video, you will learn about the different collider types in Unity. As you have already seen in the presentation, there are different kinds of colliders and we already have worked with two different collider types or actually even three. So now let's have a look at those collider types. For example, our player has a sphere collider. You can see that here. So let's go to our player here. And as you can see, there is this greenish line that you have around the player or around this circle. And that is our sphere collider. It already has gotten automatically a radius of 0.5, which fits the size of our player. So if I change that to, for example, one, my sphere collider will be bigger than the actual graphic that we can see here. So let's activate gravity for our player and let's run the game just to see what happens. Now let's go back a little bit. Let's go into the scene view here. And as you can see, our ball is on top of the ground. So it, it flies around. It looks as if it flies, but in the end, it has to do with the sphere collider because the sphere collider, so our ball collider that you can see here collides with the underground which has a mesh collider so that's already the second type of colliders this one has a different type of look and it's based on its mesh and you can find the mesh by clicking on the mesh here and as you can see here at the bottom right side this is the looks of the mesh and that can be very specific it can be based on the character for example if your character is a car then it, the mesh could be the whole surface of the car mesh is used for surfaces and the mesh collider gives these surfaces a collider all right so our underground for example here has a mesh collider from the bottom you can see that there is nothing and from the top it has this green color so we gave it this green color only from the top. Now, if we want to have a higher layer for the collider of our mesh collider, we can add convex. What it does, as you can see, now it has a collider towards the top and towards the bottom of its actual surface. And you can even inflate that. So if you want to inflate it and make it bigger, you can go ahead and inflate the, the collider of our mesh or of our underground. So if you have a look now, now our ball will be even higher. So now it's on top of this physics piece. So if we go ahead and reduce the radius of o to 0 0.5, our ball will still be on top of this physics collider. So the colliders don't have to be the same size as the objects themselves, but it does, of course, make sense to have that in most games. Maybe your game type is exactly so that it doesn't fit well with each other. Then you can, of course, change that. What you also can do is you can change the center of your collider, at least in this case. So, for example, the center of my collider could be, let's say, one higher than my ball itself. So now if we look at it, the Y position is at one. So now our ball is inside of our underground. And at the same time, as you can see, now that's how it looks, how it moves now. And the physics cell themselves, they move as intended. All right. So it just looks so weird because the radius is bigger and the position of the center is different. So zero, zero, zero is the center point of our sphere. And well, if we change any of that, we'll change the center of the collider. Now let's go back to 0 0.5. Let's set that back because that's a standard collider. Well, that's the sphere collider. Let's have a quick look at some other colliders. For example, the capsule collider. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. So that one is our capsule collider. And as you can see, it has the form of a capsule and it also has the attributes of center. It has a radius and it has a height. And you can even change the axis towards which you want to collider to be. So Y axis is going up X axis is going to the side, as you can see here. And Z axis is going towards the other side, as you can see here now. All right, so let's 
put that back to Y axis because this is standard. And now what I want to do is start my game. So I'm going to start the player here. So now let's try to hit that collider here and make it fall off because now it does have a collider. So let's see. And as you can see, it doesn't do anything. We can't hit it off. Why is that? Is it so strong? Is it so powerful? Now it has to do with, well, maybe you can figure it out. Just try to think of it. What could it be? All right. Yeah, it, it's lacking a rigid body. So let's add a physics rigid body to our capsule. And now let's try to hit it with our ball and see what happens. So let's hit it. Boom. And we see it falls off. So it automatically gets the physics and you could use that in order to create a bowling game or a domino game or something like that. All right. Next, there is a box collider. So let's create a cube. And as you can see, the cube has a greenish line here as well. That is the box collider. And you can change the size of the box collider. As you can see, now I changed the X position to two or X size to two. You can do that for Y and for Z as well. So you can make the collider bigger than the actual box itself, as you can see. And of course, the center could also be moved. So now you could move it to one so that it's higher or that it's at the center pretty much of our cube. And you can even put it on top of the cube. So now the cube will fall through, but at the same time, it will still be here. It will still hang at the bottom of our plane. Yeah. So let's add a physics body to that. Otherwise it won't see it. Let's add a rigid body as you can see now. So now our cube is at the bottom. Well, actually the graphics are at the bottom, but the physics themselves are on top of our plane. All right. Then there's one more thing that I would like to show you and I'm going to delete my cube and I'm going to delete the capsule as well but I'm going to keep the player and I'm going to put it towards the bottom as well. So now let's say we want to have an underground, which is bouncy. Actually, let's put the ball up again. If I want to have an underground that is bouncy. So let's say this is a huge bouncy underground here. What we need to do is to add a material. So here you can see that our mesh collider from underground doesn't have any material yet, and we can create a new material. So let's go to assets, create, and then it's called physics material. So here you can find physics material. Let's open that up and let's call that bouncy ground. And that bouncy ground has a dynamic friction, a static friction, a bounciness, and you can combine frictions here. So you can multiply frictions and, and multiply bounciness based on the objects that collide with each other or that touch each other. So let's get rid of the friction. So let's set those to zero and let's add a bounciness of one. So the value of bounciness is between zero and one. Usually bounciness of one means that it will bounce back with the same force that it came with. So if we have a look at it now, actually let's save that with that, with those values, go to the underground and now Let's drag our bounce ground as its material, or let's choose it here. As you can see, you can choose bounce ground and let's start it. And now you will see our ball bounces and it bounces off again. Now, why doesn't it bounce back the same way? Let's add the bounciness to the player as well. So let's add this physics material to the player and let's have a look. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Now it will bounce the same height. Before it didn't because it was influenced by the unbounciness of our ball. And now actually, based on the settings that you have set up for the multiplier, it will bounce even higher and higher every single time that it bounces. So if we have a look at bounce ground, it has a bounciness of one and the friction combined is average and the bounce combined is average as well. If we now multiply, if we choose multiply, they will multiply with each other and they will go even faster and higher. So that's how bounciness works. You can use bounciness to bounce off of something. That's great. For example, for our pong game, we will use bounciness there. Now let's have a look at friction. So let's 
delete the bounce ground from our player. So let's go to none here and let's add a friction to the ground itself. So the underground has our bouncy ground yet or still. So let's rename that bounce and or bounce C and friction or frictive ground. I think that's the right term. So now let's add a friction as well, a dynamic and a static friction. Now let's start it off. So we have a friction of one static and dynamic. And now let's have a look what happens. So our ball falls off. And now if I move it, it will be reduced. So the speed of it will be reduced a little bit. Let's add a physics body to our player as well now. So let's add it back to our player. And let's have a look now. So now they all I both have a friction of one. Well, they actually have a bounciness as well. Actually, our ball has a bounciness. Or both of them have a bounciness. So let's put that to zero. So they won't bounce anymore, but they will still have the friction. So now you can, we can barely see it here because our ball has a specific speed. But what it does, it will reduce the tempo of our ball. So it's like you can imagine it like asphalt in comparison to a very slippery ground. So if we have no friction, then it's like a slippery ground. If you have friction of one, that means that you have a very raw ground, which is rough and which will slow down our game object. All right. So that's about the colliders. So whenever you want to add a collider to an object, you can do that. And as you can see, it will change the behavior of it. So now let's save the scene and see you in the next video where we'll have a look at triggers. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like. And if you have any questions or suggestions, then leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And by the way, if you really love the content and you would like to have more of it or pretty much all of it, then of course, check out the link in the description to my whole course. See you in the next video.